face. Just like that. Okay? Now the next part is you'll take a duplicate box. I'm gonna take a second box, cut the face of the box off to right here. You'll see that line right there. Okay, so when you fold the, the box back, all card boxes have kind of a secondary fold here. So the first one is where the flap goes and the second one is where they cut the box to. That's where you're gonna to wanna to cut your card box, right there. And you cut the edges nice and, and uh, flush and you glue the second uh, cover right on top. So you can see this one's already made and you can see the magnet underneath there. But don't worry about that, no one in, in the real wor world will ever see that. So you take your glue stick again, glue all the edges, push down nice and hard. The way I do it is I stick a deck inside there, put the glue on, and just with the deck in there, you can push nice and hard on all the edges. And that is your gimmicked card box. Okay? And you'll notice if you look inside very closely, you can see the flap stuck up there, which is why we use this. Uh, why we glue it to this side. So that's kind of a little bit of um, a cover for it. If you're really paranoid about it, which uh, you really shouldn't be. I've, I've done this hundreds of times and all you're doing is showing somebody there's a folded card in the box, you dump it out, show an empty box, there's no heat on this whatsoever. But if you are nervous about that, here is your solution. You take a deck of fathoms. Fathoms work great because what I'm doing is sharpieing the entire inside of the deck. So I take a big sharpie. I undo the deck very carefully. I just split it here, open the entire thing up, and sharpied the entire inside of the box. Now the reason I use a fathom deck is because uh, very white decks with white boxes, the Sharpie will bleed through. On the fathom, it doesn't bleed through as much. And fathom cards are very bright. They're very white and bright. So if I have one inside the box, which is painted black, it sticks out really well. You can see it very clearly. Okay? And this one, when it vanishes, is gone. It's like a black art and it works really well. So if you want to go that route, go for it. You know, um, it's just a, a really nice way to conceal it. But like I said, in the performances I do, I just, I, I don't even take the time to do that. I just use it with the regular box like this and I, I've never been busted. Okay, so that's a solution for people who are worried about that. All right guys, this is the routine for Boxer. You're gonna set it up by, once you've got your gimmicked car, uh, card box made, you take a playing card to uh, unload, uh, I'm sorry, unhitch the gimmick. You just slide a playing card in there and push it downward. Sometimes you can actually just tap it down and it'll fall down. Once that's like this, you close the box, set that to the side, okay? You're going to take one card from a deck that matches whatever card gimmick box you've made and place it into a separate deck. So I'm gonna use Tundra, Artifice Tundra, as the deck I'm performing with. And since my uh, gimmick box is made with green artifice, that's the stranger card that I use. Okay, that goes second from the top, just like so. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna force that card second from the top without ever showing the back. So as I come out, I set the gimmicked card box down and explain that there's a surprise in that card box. That's kind of a, a box of mystery that we'll get to in a minute. Then I introduce this deck. I spread over to show it's all white and I'm just pushing off 
a group so I don't spread that. I said, so I'm going to have you pick a card from here, cut it into the middle, holding a break. So I'm holding a break on top of the gimmicked card. I riffle force to that. They say stop there. I put my finger in here like I'm going to lift from there. But in reality, I cut to the break. Okay? So that force would look like this. Say stop right there. Excellent. And I pick everything up at the break. Okay? Once I've done that, I need to do a double lift. So I just do a strike double. You can do whatever you want. Pinky count. Do a double lift and turn over the card. I say, interesting, very interesting. I knew you would be drawn to this card. I knew you were going to pick this card. So let's make it pretty special for you. Go ahead and sign it for me, which they do. PM for cameraman there. Okay, so they've just signed it. I do a double again. And say we're going to lose it into the pack. We'll just give them a mix. That's from another trick. Okay. What I'm doing there is just a overhand shuffle. In the first group, I peel off back about half the length. So that's going to give me a break. I keep shuffling. I can lift up on that break and cut it back to the top. Okay, so you've had the card, stranger back card signed and then apparently lost into the middle of the deck. And I, I, I speak to them uh, about how I knew they were going to be drawn to that card. And a lot of times people don't even know it, but certain cards uh, show up to them over and over again. So we'll see if they can find their card again. And all I'm, all I'm doing is cutting this two cards, uh, these two cards to the bottom. So I get a break under them, double undercut them to the bottom. Okay, so now their signed card is here. I'll say we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to riffle down and see if you can find that card again. See if there's a connection between you and the card. They say stop and you do what's called the ballet cut by John Gustafero. It's a, a beautiful move. Um, he gave me permission to teach this. You should really check his work out. He's got some of the most creative card magic I've ever seen. But this is just a gorgeous cut. It's a false cut, but you can also use it as a force. Okay, so you're going to riffle down, wherever they say stop, you do so. You very cleanly cut where they said stop. And the ballet cut is going to, you're going to kick the top half over into your left hand. You're holding the bottom packet with your thumb and second finger, and you're going to throw the packet up as you pivot that over. And then this will rotate in the air. So it will rotate and land like that. So it's hard to do slow but at speed it looks like this. They say stop here, you say you sure right there, we'll cut exactly where you stopped and you found your card again. And it's just great, people love that. It, it, it's, um, it fools them, it, it doesn't look like it should fool them, but it does, it looks exactly like you're cutting where they said stop and showing the card. Okay, so you've done that. They've said stop, you forced the card back on them, say you found it again, that's excellent. Now what I'm going to do is turn the entire deck over again and say we'll mix it up again and see if you can find it one last time. And I'm just doing some Hindus, Hindu shuffles, but keeping their card on the bottom. You can do some false cuts, making it look really lost. And for the second time, say, I want to see if you can find your card. So just when you'd like, say stop. Boom, right there, perfect. And there you go, you found it again. Now at this point, I say, I, the funny thing is I actually knew I was gonna meet you today. I knew you were gonna be drawn to an ace of hearts. Then I draw attention to the stranger box. I say, would it be impressive if I took uh, a, a different card from a green deck and placed it in there knowing before we even met that you were gonna pick an ace of hearts? And then usually they'll say, yeah, that would be great. So you draw attention to the box, which gives you time to cut this, 
to the top of the deck. So I just double undercut it to the top. Okay, so I've now got the stranger card on the top of the deck with the deck facing upward. What I'm gonna do is the mercury card fold, okay? And the mercury card fold is pushing down my thumb directly in the center of the deck. My left hand pushes downward to fold it once. My thumb holds that there. Once it hits my thumb, once my two fingers hit my thumb, I curl them inward, folding it a second time. Now this all happens under the deck, and then I end in this position. I don't crease it completely yet. I come back over with my right hand and gesture, and then I crease everything. I increase the entire card. Okay, so that's a mercury card fold. Awesome.